Now the unit we'll be using for this test today is the White's TDI. It's a very good all-purpose metal detector, especially here in Australia with the really tough gold field conditions. It needs to be able to balance out some pretty severe ground. And this is about as bad as it gets. Looks pretty good. The ground is extremely mineralized. Hi, we're at the gold fields today for a specific reason. I'm going to show you the difference between a VLF and a pulse induction. Now the pulse induction is purposely made to pick up, and a lot of people don't know this, but gold nuggets are actually very non-conductive. Things like steel, aluminium, copper are far more conductive. So to find gold in these areas is very difficult for manufacturers to achieve. And I'll show you how they do this. Have a look at this White's metal detector for starters. Now I'm just going to turn this metal detector on and use it how I would use it in the, on the beach. You simply just turn that on, sensitivity right up high, threshold is on. Now there is no filtering going on here so it's going to respond to everything. brilliantly in the beach or in the park but because we've got high mineralization here it's responding very badly now the way that the manufacturers overcome this is by using a filter system now this one has a manual filter system and I'll show you where that is They call it GEB, or Ground Exclusion Balance. Now if you turn that on, and use that to balance out the ground, you can nullify that effect. It's still responding, so I'm going to turn it up. And try that. Actually, it went the wrong way. Hear how that's it's responding negatively. So I'm going to turn that down. It's slightly positive. Okay. So I'm going to go in between. Hopefully it's balanced. Okay. Ground exclusion balance is now working. The filter system is doing its job. It's filtering out the high mineralization. Therefore, anything metallic underneath will stand out. It will not recognize the mineralization in the soil. Have a listen. That's actually a target. That's a fairly big target. I'm not going to dig it up here because this is an area I'm not allowed to be in. And I don't want to do any damage to the area. There's another target there. My point is that the detector is now balanced. Now this detector uses a manual ground balancing. The mine lab detectors actually use an automatic ground balancing. It samples the ground and adjusts itself automatically. So it tunes itself as it goes. This one, you just tune it once and away you go. You tune it to the type of area. Now, now there's another signal here. Another big signal. That's actually a coin, I can tell by the sound. A couple of coins. I'm 
listening for a gong sound. It's got a very specific noise. No. That's it. Hear that? That's what gold sounds like. I like the Mind Lab detectors because they automatically balance and adjust. They use a computer control to automatically adjust. So there is no depth loss. With this one, you have a slight amount of sensitivity. As soon as you go into gold mode, you lose a little bit of sensitivity. Both these two have a very similar operating principle. High powered pulse induction, which I recommend for the gold fields. If you use the VLF detector here, it simply would not work or it would get, be going off all the time. There it is, you got it. Oh, That's right. it, hang on. Hang on. No, I want to do this one, hang on. Is it a gold nugget? Yeah, it has to be, just how big is it? Yeah. It is. It's shiny. Hang on. It's a gold nugget. Uh, in the jar it goes. First and hopefully a few. Now I'm going to make a special mention for this metal detector here, the GP series or the GP3000. Now when this detector was released it was actually a game changer. Not so much this detector but the 2200. Now before that all we had was VLF detectors and you had to dig up many many hot rocks because they all sounded like a piece of gold. So you might dig up, you might spend half your day digging up a pile of hot rocks thinking that they're gold and if you're lucky you'll get a gold piece. Now the one thing that really changed the game with these detectors and I'll just show you. We'll go around to the other side. See that button there? fixed and tracking. Now when you switch that over to tracking they will automatically sample the ground so you can go over the most mineralized soil heavily laden with hot rocks and it will simply computer control over the whole thing and still pick out a gold nugget. Alright guys and girls out here um around Warwick area and uh, in the permission area so we're allowed to be here obviously out with a couple other blokes three other blokes got a couple of SD oh not SDs GPZ 7000s I'm using my trusty old 3000 once again with the old 8 inch uh, mono coil and uh, I'll show you the hole I only just dug it out and I'll show you all the rubbish that little hole there you can only just fit your finger in wouldn't even think it was right there's this little gold nugget sitting right there. It even works well on the beach. It adjusts itself to the wet and dry sand. Mind you, there's a setting on the other side which you can switch over for beach mode. I have seen Darren dig out gold rings two feet deep with that coil. See how it says handmade? Never found anything like that before in my life. Look at the beautiful cuts on that huge ass natural ruby. Look at the size of that ruby. That's, a prob that's possibly a real one. Not synthetic, real. Not one scratch on it, immaculate. Look at the way it goes through the sun. Look at all them angles. I, had, I kept missing it and missing it and I was just about ready to give up. I thought it was a piece of metal debris. It was that deep. Look at the shovel. That was the last scoop that I got out. So today's been paid off. After all. And it has an incredible sweep. So you can cover a lot of ground real quick and deep. If there's any gold rings out there, this will find it. Now, although this detector is a plain old VLF, it has got a couple of features which I really like. One is automatic tracking, which is on automatic tracking now. But the really big feature 
And the one thing that makes this type of detector in a class above the pulse inductions is this. Have a listen to the response of a coin. Nice clear response. Now have a listen to a bottle top. It actually goes quiet. Now imagine you can go to an area that's full of junk and skip every bottle top and pick out rings and coins. One like this. <laughs> you're kidding. Oh, you're joking me. That little that gold bug, everything it finds is worth more than a bloody unit. That is a massive bonus. Who cares about the depth? Most of the items are found pretty shallow anyway. We're out on the beach today with this new mine lag Equinox or Equinox. Now, unlike most metal detectors, unlike the mine lab, the whites, and the Fisher Gold Bug, this is more of your digital metal detector. In other words, Instead of giving a measured response to a signal, it will either give a yes or a no. And it's got a computerized control to tell you when an item is worth digging or not. So we're going to be putting this metal detector to the test and uh, see just how good and how well it performs under normal conditions. We're going to start off with this very small gold ring. Now I've got a piece of string around it. That's actually a piece of fishing line around it in case we do lose it. Okay, we'll see how deep it is. All right, we've got about 10 inches. I'll just fill that in. Now, I know if we get a reading of below zero, it's supposed to be ferrous or rusty steel. Now, it should give a positive signal. It should be somewhere between 15 and 30. Let's have a look. All right, it's given a reading of between 14 and 16. Now, to many detectors, that appears to be exactly like a gold ring. Very few detectors can tell the difference, and very few people can tell the difference. But this whole area is absolutely littered with these, and unless you can discriminate against these effectively, you're going to be flogging your ass trying to find something good for a while. So let's see how deep this is and see what difference it makes in the ground. Just lie that nice and flat. And we got... We've got about 11 inches here, sorry. That's inches there, that's centimetres. Now we're coming up to the gold ring. Now anything below a zero is supposed to be ferrous or rusty steel. Now to the gold ring that's giving a reading of 14. Now here's the bottle top. The bottle top's giving a reading. Fourteen. Okay guys, we've got a signal here. It's giving me eleven, twelve. Just have a look. Okay. Try pinpoint. I know where it is now. Dig it up, see what it is. I think I can see it. Yeah. Tiny little sinker. So, you can't even really tell what size the item is. 